Salutations! My name is Eclipse, EQ for short, and welcome to Minecraft Hardcore Modded 100 Days. In this video, I will be playing Minecraft, but with two twists. One being, the game is modded. The mod pack I will be using is MC Eternal, as it has a lot of mods that I think will make this much, much harder and much, much more interesting. It also contains a lot of mods that I know nothing about, as you will see shortly. And the other twist is that I will be playing this in Hardcore Mode. If you don't know what Hardcore Mode is, Hardcore Mode is a Minecraft difficulty setting only in the Java edition, designed to be more challenging. And let's just say it does its job really well. One death at any time, and your world is completely gone. No second chances, with the game locked on the hardest difficulty possible. Now, surviving this is gonna be a tough task in that of itself, but I'm gonna aim higher. By the end of this 100 days, I will have killed the Ender Dragon or died trying. Also, I just wanna say big shout outs to Luke the Notable for inspiring me with his 100 day series. Go check it out if you have the time, it's amazing. And personally, shout outs to my friend Bliss for encouraging me to give this a go. Also, this took around 65 hours to make recording and editing. And since I'm a one man team over here at Eclipse, that means all that work rested on my shoulders. So if you can maybe hit that like button and leave a comment down below for the algorithm gods, you'd be like my favorite person. Oh, and if you enjoy this, please consider subscribing. I just checked my analytics and it turns out that I have zero subscribers. So if you could be my first, that would be amazing. Anyways, with all of that out of the way, Welcome to Minecraft Modded Hardcore 100 Days. I loaded up the game, set the mode to hardcore, and pressed create new world. Let's do this. Day one, I started off like everyone else does. I got some wood, made some tools, and grabbed some stone. Now, I haven't played Minecraft seriously in quite a while, and this is becoming apparent to me from the get-go, because I couldn't even navigate the menu smoothly. So another hurdle for these 100 days is to actually get good at Minecraft again. Here, I found a bound soul. They're like zombies. And a little house, which I stole the bed from. Now I have somewhere to sleep. Now I just need some shelter, but I'm not wasting all that precious wood I just got, so I tunneled into the first mountain I saw. After a little digging, I think this will do nicely for a while. Once that was done, I went to this little cave here to grab some iron and coal, and just gonna dig this coal right up here, and holy shit, a troll! I punched this guy, and for whatever reason, he just disappeared. Uh, lucky break, I guess. Nope, nope, no, he's right here. I rushed back home and didn't have a door, so I barricaded myself in with marble, because I'm fancy. Here you can see me starting quests, pretty much tasks to complete in this mod pack that give you rewards. As we continue, I'll make sure to come back to this whenever there's something you guys need to know, but other than that, don't worry about it. Like right here, I got an Ender backpack as a reward, basically more inventory space. Sweet. The rest of the night, I decided to make myself useful and make a mine shaft, where I found some coal, iron, and this cave but a skeleton shot at me and I got scared, so I left. Once I got back up to my house, we'll call it, I saw it was daytime, meaning I've survived day one. Nice. The next day, I packed up all my stuff and ended up venturing off towards new land. I ended up finding emerald in this little vein above ground. There's tons of them in this mod pack. I made tools with them because holy shit, they're powerful. I was killing some pigs for their delicious meat when I found a staircase leading to a dungeon? I mean, the blocks are called dungeon blocks, so I think it's a dungeon. Once inside, I clicked this block in the middle and I started playing Simon Says. See, I told you this mod pack was gonna be interesting. I literally played Simon Says for the whole day till it switched up patterns and I lost. You know, I was tempted to leave this all in because it's really fun to watch at 700%, but still, that would have taken too long, trust me. Once I finally had lost, it spawned three chests for my reward, and here I am being totally blind to the real prize here. Yeah, there you go. Good job, past me. You realize that you just got a totem of undying on day two of hardcore. Needless to say, I was excited. Oh my God, oh my God. D day two of this fucking hundred days and I have a, a totem of undying after my freak out I grabbed those lamps because I thought they were pretty and it was already dark So I ended up sleeping in the dungeon that night once morning struck I headed off to find an actual place to build a home It was rather easy with those boots. I picked up in the dungeon They apparently had special perks that allowed me to jump really high and not take fall damage. Hey, I'm not complaining I found this little hut and tried to loot it, but my inventory was too full sad face I, that's literally what I wrote in the script. I wrote sad face. Great. 
At least it was right next to a good enough place to set up camp, so I built a cobblestone hut for the time being. Hey, it's not much, but it's home. Once it was getting dark, I decided to mine for the rest of the night, and I mined everything. Iron, ruby, tin, coal, silver, sapphire, the whole nine yards. Once that was done, the sun was starting to come up, and I began smelting all my ores and called it a successful day three. The next day, I completed the Best Friends Forever quest. Don't worry, that'll come into play later. In this mod pack, there's an interesting mechanic where you can gain hearts to add to your max health by eating different foods. It's random if you gain health from a food or not, so I just end up eating one of every new food. I bring this up because after gorging myself on the delicacy that is a spider's eyeball, I gained two hearts. My guy has some seriously weird taste. I found melons! Yes! Wasting no time, I made some walls. Mobs won't be able to spawn over there, and I'll be safe-ish inside them. Next up was to do some excavating. This is where I'm gonna build my actual house. Also gotta light it up so nothing spawns. I am a fragile little baby, after all. So most ores are not as strong as iron, so it's not worth making armor out of them. Except ruby pants. For some reason, those are both stronger and more durable than iron. So I'm rocking out with some red joggers now. But it was getting late, so I clocked out for the night and slept in my cozy stolen bed. Today I'm getting wood, and a lot of it. So I made a sapphire axe and I got to work. I'm getting all this wood so I can build a nicer house. So this is basically all I did today. Except right here where I found a crate. It was locked and I didn't have a key, but I was able to pick it up and save it for later. Anyways, back to chopping trees. Hello, little deer. I don't want to have to do this, but I haven't tried your meat yet. Ha! I knew it! You were delicious! I tried to make a sack of holding, but it didn't seem to do anything. No extra storage for me, I guess. But the sun was coming up, so now it's day six. Day six was the day I started to make a proper house, but while I was placing the foundation, a zombie walked up on me. Now this zombie is special. He's what's called a boss mob. Not to be mixed up with actual bosses, they're basically mobs with more health and more attack than usual and a special perk. This one's worth reflecting, so as I hurt him, he hurt me right back. Fun fact, my first run of this ended to a zombie villager with vortex. He sucked me right in and killed me in one shot. Yeah, okay, sure! Later that night, as I was building, I got blindness from touching a bat, and a vampire ran up on me. I should not be doing this right now. Vampires are really strong and can probably three-shot me, even with this armor on, but I had no other choice, so I bopped him. Then I kept working on my house well into day seven. Not much to say here. I spent all day adding finishing touches to my house and moving everything in so I could actually live there. Finally, I found a use for those dungeon lamps. You know, this place is ugly. But it's a good kind of ugly. Day eight, I basically didn't do much. I literally just made a farm all day, and I made that farm the bestest it could ever is be, and I'm proud of it. Day nine, I was collecting more seeds for my farm when I came across a giant blue slime. I killed him and turned his corpse into a trampoline. Afterwards, I came back to my camp and started a proper mine. I found a cave here. I shouldn't have entered it. I did anyway. See, I'm looking for diamonds. I know it's no surprise to anyone, but I'm gonna need those for a couple things. After a while, I ran into this mob spawner that exploded when I got too close. I did not like that. Not at all. I killed all the mobs and kept progressing into the cave until I found a goblin and decided to get the double H-E fucking hockey stick out of there. When I got back to the surface, the sun was rising and I tended to my like two crops. Woohoo, this'll sure feed me. Double digits, baby. I spent the day farming and sprucing up my house a bit. Here, I'm making a lamppost. Why? Because I'm fancy. Remember that dog quest I completed? Well, here he is. My dog came out interesting, so I named him Oops. I love Oops, he's a good boy. I think tomorrow we go on an adventure. Sure, it's hella risky, but I'm not gonna sit here and be a farmer my entire life. To be as safe as possible, though, I bought all the food I could from the quest shop to see if it would raise my max HP. Spoilers, none of them did. All right, up bright and early. We got a big day ahead of us. First things first, I need a lot of glass for a build, so I'm picking up as much sand as I can. Lucky break, I found a scarecrow, and they're really dangerous at night. But during the day, they don't move, so let me just, uh, uh, yeah. Grabbing more sand. Here, I end up finding a wishing well. While not really rare, it's the only one I've seen, so I'm marking it on my map for later use. Now we're talking. I gotta see what's in there. Zombies, lots of them. Okay, changing up my method of attack here. I'm getting to all this loot and no one's stopping me. Okay, okay, you may be stopping me. I ran the hell out of there, munching on some fish and chips, which gave me 12% more health and made me 50% more British. Climbing up to the higher level, this chest had a lot of stuff, but the most important thing is this staff of engraved thunder, but more on that later. I'll just take these books. Gonna need them for an enchantment table if I can ever get any diamonds. After taking out these mobs, I broke one of the barrels and ah, the pink chicken. <sighs> I need you. But I had no way to bring him back and it was getting dark. So I just chilled with him all night. He was pretty cool. Learned he was from Kentucky. I needed to head home and make a lead so I can bring my pink pal home to his new petrified prison. 
See what I did there? I made the lead and went back to my new friend. But as I was taking him back, disaster struck. The rest of the day was a day of mourning. I even built a funeral for the pink chicken. He was pink. Rest in peace. Day 13, I tested out my new toy. And then I went to go mine for the next few days. I'm looking for diamonds. I found everything but diamonds. <sighs> Later on into the expedition, this ends up happening. Holy shit! I'm alive! Oh god! <laughs> I just wanted diamonds, man. The next day, I stopped mining, because it's clearly too dangerous. So, instead, we ventured out. I realized that this was taking too long, so it's time to make a player launcher. But I don't have glowstone, so I guess we'll get there later. I found a bobble ring here. This thing basically makes me impervious to lava for a little while. Perfect, since I plan to head to the nether soon. Here I am, staring into the heart of the beast, and I didn't even know it. Right after, I found a village, and I looted it for the rest of the day. Day 16, I looted the rest of the village. There wasn't much. No diamonds. Sad face. And made my way back. Pufferfish are insanely toxic, but I have to try. Of course, it managed to actually increase my max health, but it also poisoned me really badly. So I jumped up a tree and hid like a baby till the food poisoning passed. Uh, here I dropped some clownfish. This is important. Do not forget. Once I got back, I went to mine obsidian for the rest of the night because I need to go to the nether. I ended up getting 32 obsidian. The next day, I made a portal and worked up the courage to finally head into the nether and grab some glowstone as fast as possible, then run back I'm to the gone. portal like a little bitch. But it was all worth it because the player launcher is now complete. What is the player launcher? I'll show you. Ah, oh, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Now we schmoovin'. Well, back to mining. I really need some diamonds. Don't worry, this time I'll be safer. I finally found some, but they were being protected by this octillery looking motherfucker. Sorry, buddy, you gotta go. Finally, I got some diamonds. I also realized that for whatever reason, when I broke the diamonds, I have fortune and haste effects still, as if the game thought I was holding the fortune glove. So basically, until I die and it resets, I've got fortune one and haste at all times. And since this is hardcore, we're sitting pretty, really pretty, like orange and blue crystals in this cave pretty. I had no idea what this place was, but it was beautiful. And there were emeralds and diamonds and gold and lapis and jackpot. Oh, look, a little goblin boy. Wonder why he's here. Oh, it's cause it's a troll cave, fuck. I ran away and placed like seven million blocks and hid. Then I hid in a hole and gimped him with my thunder wand. Afterwards, I headed back home and I went to bed. I decided to relax and made some actual armor, and I look beautiful. <laughs> I look really ugly. I also totally need more sand for this totally not mistake of a build I'm totally gonna try to totally properly totally make tomorrow. You know, I'm getting real sick of these near-death experiences. Here, one of the Rifter guys tried to drag me into their portal and send me to the evil Rift dimension, but he was stopped by his only nemesis, Walls. And I relaxed for the rest of the day, because I was pretty spent from almost dying a thousand times. The next day, I made a mistake and used all the sand that I was getting to make an ugly glass platform. <sighs> Who could have seen that coming? It's not all bad, though. I made more walls because of it, this time with pretty stone. Here, I found an owl stuck under my glass monstrosity. I named them Owlicious. If you know, you know. Oh, would you look at that? I took down this glass platform I spent a million years collecting stuff for and making. Who would have thought? I ended the night by making a sign with all my goals. It's goal. nice to have. Day 22, more walls. While placing the walls, I found a cave on my property. Property? Property. Property. <laughs> While placing walls, I found a cave on my property and went to investigate. Passing up on a valuable crate, I found a dungeon and didn't want to die, so I gimped the enemies and grabbed the chest. It did have one diamond. I lit the place up because I didn't want to die, and then I left. Okay, fine. Right, I'll, the crate. I'll pick up the crate. Valuable crate. 
How valuable could it be? Holy shit. Good that morning. took up the whole day, so I turned in early on day 22. Day 23 began with yeah, one goal, comes, get wood. But I got distracted, so I spent the night hiding up on this structure where I found a crate which I couldn't open and a whole ass spawner temple. I took out the spawners and tried my life by killing these creepers with engraved thunder, which of course only, you know, electrocuted them, making them more powerful. Fuck, <laughs> I charged him. So I spent the rest of the night stealing all the bricks from the roof. It was safer that way. The next day, I found another dungeon, and it had some amazing loot. A lot of and I had no room for it, so I went home to go lighten my load. And as I was leaving... I'll be back. Let's see how hard it is. Oh. Oh, that was a dragon. So I made myself scarce and didn't heed the warnings, and came right back, grabbed everything, and yeeted so hard and fast that I ran right into this tower, where I found a compressor chest with a ruby and sapphire lock. You already know there's great shit in there, and one day I will open you. Then I went home. Good day. Day 25, needed wood, got a lot of it. It's time to head back to the wishing well. I got a couple tokens from the crate and you throw them into the wishing well and they give you prizes. I got a water breathing potion and a regen potion out of it. It was great. And I finally feel good and powerful enough to take this wizard's house. I knocked on his roof with eviction papers and stole all of his belongings. There, do you see it? Cause I still didn't, right there, right there. The rest of the day, same old, same old. Get wood, loot dungeons. I had the biggest brain moment right here and I snipped out a trap and saved my poor life because I'm such a genius. Really, I've just seen one of these before in my personal world, so I'm not a genius, just I have object permanence. Here, I got a crate that had all these beautiful keys, wood, stone, and iron. Back to the wishing well, because there's nothing else to do with these coins, and I was blessed with the elusive emerald key, poggers. Next day, more wood collecting, and totally don't pay attention to the dumb EQ breaking this crate with the wrong tool and shattering it out of existence. Don't, don't worry about that. All I did for the rest of the day was collect wood. Day 28. It's finally time. I got all the wood I needed and I'm ready to build my house. This ended up taking three days, day 28 through day 30. And it's not the best looking house, but I call it home. Now that I have a house, it's time for the worst thing in modded Minecraft. Organization. No joke, this took just as long, if not longer than building an actual house. But because I'm a master editor and do the quirky YouTuber snap, it's all done. Okay, I lied. Day 35, I was still doing the same thing, just organizing all my stuff, chopping trees, same old, same old. But at the end of the day, I found a big treasure slime that gave me cookies upon death, so that was super neat. Day 36, the footage was really blurry for some reason, but this happened. Did you get that? One touch from his flames did 12 hearts of damage. 12. Needless to say, that spooked me. Oh my God. <laughs> no, dude. I, I, he, he rendered in like for half a second. And I was like, it's over. It's over. This is the end of me. This is the end of me. I think the main reason for this was I was flying with the player launcher too fast for the chunks to load and didn't see that I jumped right into a dragon's den. I was careful using the player launcher for the rest of the hundred days after that. Like, look, I'm crouching while collecting slate for some reason. I was terrified. The dragon shook me to my core. Nightfall arrived and I had nowhere to sleep because I was far away from camp, so I tunneled into a tree and just hid there. Day 37. I looted a chest, then got called in by some beautiful mermaids that turned out to be sirens. I yeeted myself away using my physics breaking player launcher and found a stone sphere, which had a cyclops in it. After finding out he had 2,500 health, I got the fuck out of there. Again? Okay, I'm gonna have to actually kill these guys this time. That's what you get for tussling with the muscle in. Here I thought I broke the game and that this was an unloaded chunk, but it turns out that this was just a hole with a spider chest at the bottom of it, and the spider chest had an emerald lock. And it just so happens that I have an emerald key. Oh, you already know what I'm doing when I get home. I'm finding all sorts of things today. A blaze spotter in the overworld. They didn't drop any blaze rods though, and all I managed to do was to burn this forest down. All this trouble for two bombs? Really? Oh well. Hopefully this pirate ship will have better loot. And my god, it did. Just look at this pickaxe. Mending three? I can't even count that high. I heard a lot of mobs down below me and found a spawner, so I made myself a little makeshift grinder and took them out all of day 38. Day 39, I made my way home and went to opening chests. The spider chest had some good loot and a couple of diamond keys. Now I just need a ruby and sapphire key and I've got the whole bunch. 
The other two crates were a little disappointing, but I was already happy with the diamond key, so I'm not complaining. Okay, so this island has been on my property for too damn long, and it's unexplored, and we're gonna change that. Using my player launcher and a couple of well-timed jumps, I was able to just barely make it up there. Once I was up there, I found some green and purple slime. Testing their bounceitude, trademark, they both sent me the same three blocks into the air. So this could be useful for something. Afterwards, I made an enchantment table. I thought it was high time we had one. Next day, I tried to get fortune three on my pickaxe, but I ran out of lapis while trying. So I went back to the mine to go get more. Also, don't forget to pay respects to Pink Chicken. He was pink. It took me forever and a half to find Lapis. But on day 42, I finally found some. Then I found a wizard and I'm just gonna say it, he promptly kicked my ass. So in return, I kicked his ass and decided it was time to leave. With a whopping 14 Lapis under my belt, I went to try again and still no fortune three, damn it. You know what that means, it's back to the mine. Time to strip mine though, because I don't trust the caves after what happened last time. And only when I stopped looking for it did I finally actually find some diamonds. And when I said diamonds, I mean diamonds. I'll let past me explain. Oh my God, dude. Okay, okay, I need to explain this. I need to explain this. Sorry, I'm freaking out. Okay, so there are veins in this game um, and, and they're very rare, but you can find them and they are basically just like a normal vein of, a, of one ore instead of going on like four, for four or eight or sometimes 12 with like uh, more common ores like iron, they just go on for like a million. I think I just found one made of fucking diamond. I made sure not to mine any of it until we had fortune three. You know I'm getting as many diamonds as possible. I found a cave. I shouldn't have explored it. I did anyway. It paid off because I finally found some more lapis. I swear this blue stuff is rarer than diamonds. While exploring the cave, I ended up finding another troll cave thingy and an archeologist villager, but it didn't have engraved thunder on me. So I needed to go back and grab that. It was getting late though. So when I got home, I slept the night off. The next day I grabbed engraved thunder, headed back and started to steal, I mean, collect the ores and crystals. While doing so, I found a mossy road that ended up leading me to another crystal cave. What the hell? Well, of course I need these crystals too. Now, I was very careful mining everything here. I don't know how much a troll can do to me, and frankly, I don't wanna find out. But of course, I never get what I want, cause a troll spawned right in this ravine and ambushed me. I told you engraved thunder would come in handy. Well, that's enough exploring for me for one day. Let's go back home. Where I once again failed to get fortune three to show up. Why? While messing around with my sack on day 47, I found that it could hold blocks that I right click. I guess that's why it's called a sack of holding. That makes more sense now. Whatever, using this, I could take a small storage crate with 100 spaces with me anywhere. This is insane. And I'm so mad that it took me till halfway through these 100 days to even figure that out. Today, I had two goals, explore this broken temple looking thingy and find a place for a mob grinder, specifically with a lot of spawners right next to each other because I think that'll work rather well. And would you look at that, two birds with one stone. This dungeon wasn't very hard, but when I got to the center, I found an enderman right next to an enderman spawner with a chest on top and ooh, doggy. There was some good stuff in that there chest, I'll tell you. Not only that, but I think this will be the perfect place for my mob grinder. Also, this is just a hunch, but what if I... So using the sack of holding, I can move these spawners and have them all be a part of my mob grinder. Oh, if you're curious, this is the best screenshot I have of the loot I collected down here. Just saying, those seven emerald blocks got me feeling a certain way. Anyway, I spent all the day 49 making the grinder. And I know it's gonna work well, cause even as I was clearing the space for the grinder, tons of mobs were already spawning. Day 50 is when the mob grinder began to take shape, but it's a little slow and I don't know why. Ah, I figured it out. I left the torches on top of the spawner. Just gotta knock them off and make sure a skeleton doesn't knock me off to my impending doom. After that, it was running much smoother, but I think I can make this work just a little bit better. Please keep in mind that I've never built a proper spawner before, and I know there is specifically better ways to do this, but with spawners at my disposal, I thought this would work fine. After adding a drop so I don't have to waste all my swords durability on these mobs, I say this is working quite nicely. I spent all of the next day grinding away until I headed back to my base and fell in an oil spill. I don't even want to tell you how long that took to get out of. Afterwards, it was dark and I found a zombie villager outside my walls. After a lot of effort, I captured him and named him Terold. I went back to my spawner and just look at how fast Mending 3 repairs my pickaxe. I love it. I decided that since this diamond pick has Mending 3 and I don't even think I can get Mending 3, this is gonna be my main pickaxe. So I went to try and get Fortune 3 on a diamond pickaxe and this time I got it second try. Is this some kind of joke? Eh, whatever, look at my pickaxe now. 
Day 54, more time at the grind. While bouncing back home, I found a wizard spawner sigil thingy. I don't know what to call it. I wasn't prepared and most of my armor has taken a beating, so I left it for later. Now for the moment you've all been waiting for. It's time to see what Fortune 3 combined with Fortune Glove effects can do against the world's largest vein of diamonds. Mending 3, Fortune 3, Efficiency 5, Auto Smelt, and Breaking 3, and Experience Boost 3. The world's greatest pickaxe. Let's test it on the five vein first. All right, five vein. 31 diamonds, oh my God. Now it's time for the big boy. One thing I did not think about is with XP boost three on this thing, it'll give me levels so fast. I mean, just look at my XP bar. So I decided once I hit level 50, I should put these levels to good use and left the diamonds for another time. I used the XP I got to make a badass sword. The sun came up as I was getting more emeralds to make more swords to fuse together to make the almighty best sword. And my heart sank as a message popped up in chat, Terald had burned to death. Eh, just steal the name tag and maybe no one will notice. I left those blocks of emerald at the spawner and I'm gonna need them to make some good armor. So I think it's high time that I go back there. And while I'm there, I might as well hit some mobs. But while I was bouncing back home, I made my way a little too far into the vampire forest and attracted the dragon that lives there. I went to leave, but as I did, I saw the dragon take refuge in the middle of the village. I guess this is his home now. I cannot catch a break today. Outside my camp was the Undertaker, a boss with 3,500 health and the ability to one-shot me if I'm not careful. This is not a joke. I loaded it up in a creative world just to show you guys and full emerald, boom, dead, he doesn't care. It was getting late as I was fighting him and I didn't want other mobs to come between me and my prize. So I went to buy a cozy little bed to pass the night. However, I'm not stupid. So I made sure that I was safe while doing my signature move of gimping everything stronger than me. And after way too long, I bopped him. I spent the rest of the day doing what I should have done like 30 days ago. I made actual good armor. Hopefully I'll be able to take a couple of hits now. By day 57, I had some dope gear. I didn't take a screenshot of it, but I have a list of all the enchantments and they're important. So I'm gonna quickly go over them if you don't mind. My helmet. Proc 4 on Breaking 3 and Last Stand 2. I'm gonna read what this does because I had to look it up and it's a part of the mod. I didn't know what it meant. Basically, Last Stand 2 lets me take killing blows and live on half a heart if I have enough experience points to live the hits. I don't really know the amount of experience I need to last or anything. And to be honest, at the time of recording, I didn't even know what this did. I just thought I'd tell you what Last Stand does. Pants are the same thing as my helmet and the same with the chest plate but the boots are where it gets a little more interesting. Depth Strider 3, Unbreaking 3, Proc 3, Lightning Resistance, and Multi Jump 3, which is my favorite because I could basically get three extra really high jumps. Also, the sword is badass. Here's a screenshot. Into the nether! Right off the bat, get it? I realize this place is no joke in MC Eternal. How did I notice this? The bat fucking exploded. However, with multi-jump, navigating this place became a cakewalk. Not gonna lie to you guys, I totally thought this was a Roblox guy until it started throwing TNT at me. I already hate the nether. You know, even though I'm in literal hell, that's the name of the place, bouncing around like this is borderline fun. Here, I found a blaze lantern and it was gorgeous. This is my new favorite light and I want more of them, but I'm also trying not to die, so I'ma just get myself out of here and come back later. Okay, I fucked up right here, but just look at how powerful the bobble ring is. It's absorbing all the lava damage. And even when it's gone, I'm just that powerful, but I shouldn't get careless. Hello, little foxy, are you friendly? Nope, nope, no you're not, you're not. Fuck, I found what I was looking for, a nether fortress. I'm basically looking for two things, blazes for their rods and withers for their skulls. That's right, we're gonna fight the wither as well in these 100 days, that is, if I don't die. I made a platform for withers to spawn on, but it was pretty useless because right next to the fortress, I found another that was crawling with withers and teeming with wither spawners. Wither skeletons, not withers themselves, that would be terrifying. Also, the loot here was amazing. Okay, well, not all chests can be winners. Did I scare you there? Trust me, I scared me too. Uh, thanks to Looting 3, it didn't take too long to get the skulls I needed, and I headed back to the overworld triumphant and tired. I made these reinforced pearls for finding the fortress and going through the end, but they were kind of weird. But a solid ender eye is a solid thing to have, so I'm not complaining. Trying to organize myself, I made another to-do list. I'm a busy bee. I guess I was feeling really confident here because I had no food, and yet I went back to the wizard spawner and just tried to take him out. Something you can't see here is when you spawn the wizards, there's a barrier that doesn't let you leave the chunk. So I couldn't run away even if I wanted to. But my good old friend in Grave Thunder came to the rescue and we took them all out. 
I didn't notice it here, but one of the wizards dropped their wands, which is already leveled up from novice to advanced, so that's gonna save me a lot of time. The rest of the loot was really disappointing, but the runestone more than makes up for it. It just looks so cool. Later that day, I tried using ancient tomes, but I'm too stupid to figure that out. And I spent the rest of the night learning magic. I learned two spells, freeze and light. The way spell learning works is you have to use the spell over and over and bad things happen to you until you learn it and it's random. So this was a process. And day 61, I got Arc, Ignite, Firebomb, Ice Shard, Invisibility, Homing Spark, Mind Trick, and Heal Ally, which is useless because I'm alone. But other than that, those are some good spells. Day 62. Here we go. I started off the day searching for food in a village as my last one, uh, has a new owner. And while I was searching, I learned llamas do not drop food. So I killed them for no reason. Sad. And then this happened. I was so close to biting the dust 23 hours into this challenge. The only reasons I lived here was because A, I was already turning around to leave because there was a sea serpent there and they're very powerful. And B, last stand two procced and just barely saved me. I'm not lying when I said this is one of the closest calls I've ever had in Minecraft. And it doesn't stop there. As I was trying to leave, I ran into yet another dragon den. This is a completely separate one. I ran and hit again because I was so shaken and I didn't want to lose everything. And of course, the other way I was heading led to another fucking dragon. I can't go anywhere in this world without medieval death traps. I've decided I'm going to be a farmer. I can't die if I don't leave my camp, right? So that's what I did. I grabbed a shovel, enchanted it, prepared all my land, and by nightfall, it started looking good. Bumpkin. I didn't do much today other than bringing all my loot from my mob grinder back over to the main camp. Other than that, I killed a cow here, so that was cool. Did some tidying up around the compound and grabbed more of those diamonds. I swear I have a plan for it. Day 66, I fell through the world. I don't know how this happened, but okay. I grabbed the rest of my stuff from my mob grinder and I carefully headed back. I needed more space to expand my land, so I took a crazily enchanted axe and I went to town. I also wanted to see how fast this axe worked, and by dusk, I had completely leveled the forest. So I named the axe the DeForester. You know, the camp is finally starting to come together, and I'm pretty proud of all that we've built here. I'm having a great time, and I hope you are too. In fact, if you are, maybe hit that like button and maybe leave a comment and, and subscribe. I, I, I mean, you don't have to, I, mean, I don't care, but like, if you want, you load 16 tons, what do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. St. Peter, don't you call me cause I can go. I owe my soul to a hundred hardcore. <laughs> That's fucking stupid. And totally gonna need these blocks for something soon. Don't worry about it. But my pickaxe ended up smelting the blocks right away when I mined them and they were really pretty. Look, don't judge me. I've never had glazed terracotta. I'm having fun. Speaking of fun, I'm lining my farm with blue and red glowy magic crystals, and I'm very pleased with how they look. It's time. On the perfect day, we are building a masterpiece. Can you guess what it is yet? Can you guess? Yep, I'm building a giant 69 sign, and I am lining it with diamond. This is probably the thing I'm most proud of in my life. Afterwards, I went to the bathroom. I wrote a sign to commemorate the occasion. And I spent the rest of the night making things on the camp look sexy. I thought it was appropriate considering the day. I went back to the cave on day 70 to get more crystals for my camp. And I stumbled upon a room where when I broke the stone, it replaced itself with a random block. I'll have to come back to you. Day 71, I came back and I mined that infinite block all day. And I got quite a lot of ores that you usually wouldn't get in the overworld. Here, I'm trying to learn about essence, but I don't make it very far. So maybe that's something we can do for 200 days. Also, side note here, my camp looks beautiful at night now. The crystals are perfect. So this is technically the start of day 73, I'm pretty sure. Um, only reason I'm doing this right now is because I want to show you guys that uh, there are no cheats enabled on this. Just, just to make sure. 
I know no one thinks there is, but I am would like to prove because there's been a lot of crazy things that have happened in this series. Um, there's no way to do that. I've been on hardcore mode the whole time. Uh, technically, yes, I can create a new world, make it hardcore, go into the world, and open land. But if I were to do that, the word cheats would appear right here. As you can see, there's nothing there. I'm not like bullshitting or anything. Like this is this is the one. So uh, this is all legit. I spent the whole next day mining and stuff. It was fun, relaxing even. It's time to get down to business. We're finding that stronghold. While following the Eye of Ender, I found a village and there were some clownfish in this one house and I, I, I promise it's important, do not forget about that. Not too far from the village was the stronghold and this was the worst stronghold I've ever been in. I'll save you the details, but it took three days to find the portal and it was the most boring and grueling task I've ever done in Minecraft. But luckily, we could skip all that. Day 76, we managed to find the proper sapphire to make the sapphire key in the stronghold. Now, all we need is a proper ruby, and then we can open that compressor chest. I also found a person's head in a chest, so good finds all around. Day 77, I heard random explosions and went to go find out what the hell they were when I ran into a goblin, but like a really big one. He actually ended up killing himself with his explosions, so lucky break, I guess. I finally found the portal. <sighs> I, I literally used a mini map to find this because it was so hidden. I, I had to zoom in on my mini map. It was just, I cannot believe this took so much, but screw it. I found it, marked it on the map and headed back to my base to prepare. While clearing out space on my new land, I found a chameleon and I named him Terold. Don't know why, the name just came to me. So I wanted to just make a brewery, but I'm gonna be honest. I got carried away and just built this beautiful house. And this is where I'm going to live now. This took about three days and I finished it on day 82. So, uh. Whoops, here we go. I call this the slow fall arc. Let me set the scene. Here I am, day 83, trying to make a slow fall potion for the Ender Dragon, and I'm following the recipe in normal Minecraft, but unbeknownst to me, the recipe is different in MC Eternal. So I just ended up making potions of gravity. Then I took to the wiki and found out you need either frog legs or rabbit's feet and feed the beast. So I went back to the swamp only to find that there are no frogs in this mod. So I tried looking for rabbits. And after searching through the desert, scouring for a whole day, I ended up just finding them in the shop. But when I made the potions, all they made were potions of leaping. It was only then that I pulled my fucking head out of my ass and realized that there's a built-in recipe guide like right there. And it says I need three things. Nether wart, Ender pearls and clownfish. This is when I entered panic mode. I only have 15 days left, and I was worrying that I was running out of time to fight this dragon in 100 days, or especially since I have to find nether ward. So I'm in the nether. I brought no food, and I only have a potion of regen on me, and I'm schmoofing. I made it to that fortress that we knew before, but it had no nether ward in it, so fuck. I gotta find a whole other fortress. And after scouring and searching with my health low and my spirits diminished, my regen potion completely gone, I finally found it. Another fortress. As I marched down every corridor, danger and death lurking in every possible scenario and situation, I found it. Nether Ward. It was guarded, and every enemy chipped away little by little at my health bar. Okay, there were three enemies there, but it sounds way more dramatic like that, right? No lie, right here I completely thought it was over, because the chunks weren't loading, and I personally was terrified. It's a lot safer to bounce like this in the nether, because dragons don't usually spawn, but they still can, which is still a problem. When I got back home, I should have rested up for the night and got some food, but I was a man on a mission, and I bounced so fast to that village and looked, hoped, and prayed for clownfish. As my hearts were falling down to the point we start with, dawn was breaking, and I finally found that house and collected 14 clownfish. Whoo! Whoo! It's done! Slow falling potions! I'm so... Happy. The rest of the day was spent preparing for the dragon. Everything will be put into my ender chest so I can keep it all organized and so you guys can see the finished product of all I'm taking. Here's how it looks so far. All right, I know I've said it before, but this is the worst part of 100 days in modded Minecraft. This took three whole days, no sleep, no nothing, of just complete and utter 
Grab this, don't grab this, grab this, grab this, grab this, don't grab this, don't grab this, don't grab this, this. But luckily for you, I'm a quirky YouTuber, so you guys don't have to watch all of that. Somewhere in between, I also got extra hearts, but I didn't mark it and don't care to sift through an hour of me just organizing stuff. So you'll just have to take my word for it. I ended day 90 by writing down my final set of goals for this 100 days. Day 91, I had two goals today. Get bread and get armor. Weird to have both those goals in one day, but I'm running out of time. I went over to my enchantment table and made a very nice chest plate and a pickaxe named for a king. I also wanted to name my sword, but I had no idea what to name it. So I sent out to Twitter and tweeted this and left it up for the top reply. While we wait for that, I got more food for sandwiches. I need a lot of meat and a lot of variants. So I definitely am gonna have to kill some animals. Usually you would use a farm for this, but I don't have one. That's a 200 days thing. Also, Dylan tweeted the name Sorty at me and it won top reply. So the sword's name is Sorty. Thanks, Dylan. But as I was looking for more food, I found a dungeon and thought, what the fuck? It's one more adventure. In this dungeon, it was just like the one that I made my mob grinder out of, but made of wood. And the loot was kind of lackluster. That is, until I got to the middle. Bar me almost getting blown up by a creeper, I found a shulker box in here and was pretty happy. Then in a double chest in the dead center, I presume, I found an elytra and kind of freaked out. Oh my god. <laughs> No way! Yes, please! Yes, please! We put all this stuff away for now. I've got an elytra, dude. What the hell? I'm eating one of these as soon as I get the chance. I've got like five. Yeah, a little embarrassing, but shush. That was about all in this dungeon, so I headed back home, and while I was doing so, I bumped into a dragon. But remember that golden apple I ate? Yeah, the dragon's fire did nothing to me. Sandwiches have been made! These will really help since eating one sandwich is kind of like eating four steak in this mod. I left them in the chest where they belong for now. Oh, and more spells. Summon Lightning Wraith, Conjure Block, Heal, perfect. After 100 days, it has served me well, but it's finally time to make another engraved Thunder Staff, just in case it breaks in the dragon fight. Also, I'm trying to eat some food here, but I move over to the engraved Thunder and I set my house and my dog on fire. Just, just let's move on, moving, moving along. To heal oops, I need a cake. So I went out to milk a cow and I drained his udders. Literally, I got like 18 buckets. Once I made the cake and went to give it to my dog though, he was just fine. He didn't want the cake, he wasn't damaged, he was good. So fine, I'll eat it alone then. Later on, I got worried about Terold and decided to make him a little pin to live in. I even decked the bottom out in diamonds so he could look frigid. Then I realized he was lonely, so I went to find him a friend. I found one, but as I was bouncing back, uh, I claim plausible deniability. I didn't see it happen, so I'm not involved. It's fine though. I found another one right outside of camp and brought him back. This little one's name's Jerry, like the inverse of Terold, don't think about it too much. Then I spent the rest of the night preparing and no longer stalling, cause tomorrow we killed the wither. The morning came and I ran off a decent way from the base just in case this got ugly. And I did what everyone else does. I dug down and fought him underground. This is day 97. Do you think I'm gonna play this stupid? However, he ended up being really easy. So I picked another star and made myself my first ever completely legit Beacon. No lie, I've never done this before. On the bright side, I found a use for all those diamonds. But making a beacon just of diamonds takes a lot of diamonds. 1,476 diamonds to be exact. Which means, sadly, I gotta take the diamond trim off the 69 sign. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe we can deck it out in emeralds for 200 days. But after all that work, the beacon lit and it was beautiful. Don't mind me, just taking some glamour shots. This one's going in the thumbnail. The rest of day 98, I spent getting everything ready one last time. You know, this has really been a journey and we've come a long way. For me personally, this is the first time I've ever did anything scripted or anything this complex and convoluted for a video. And you know what? It was amazing. No matter what happens tomorrow, I hope you enjoyed 100 days. But of course, with the sun going down, and time not stopping, we've got to keep going. Good night, day 98. And Ender Dragon, I'm coming for you. Day 99, I woke up bright and early and launched myself to the end, dug into the stronghold and placed the eyes. We've made it 
to the end. Now, I'm sorry if this impairs your vision, but in this mod, the end is pitch black, so I thought that putting a pumpkin on my head wouldn't change much. Also, that's why I brought a million torches. I started the fight by knocking out all the crystals from afar, until I got down to two. Both had cages around them, and I'm gonna need to get close to free them. Then I made the worst play in this entire 100 days. I lived on half a heart and I wasn't gonna let that blessing go to waste. I gapped up and safely removed the final crystal. Now it's time for the dragon. With a combination of slow falling, multi jump, and persistence, the dragon fell pretty easily. And after one more hit, I had done it. I beat the ender dragon in modded Minecraft hardcore in 100 days. I grabbed the egg, failed to grab this elytra that the dragon dropped, and entered the portal. When I awoke, it was dusk. So I went to bed one last time on day 99. Day 100. I spent the last day just roaming around the camp and taking everything in. You know, we made so many memories and got so much done in these 100 days, but we haven't even scratched the surface of all there is to do in this mod pack. So if you want to see me do 200 days, let me know. Or if you want to see me do 100 days on a different mod pack or vanilla or whatever, leave a comment down below. And as a proper final send-off, I built up and made a launch pad, overlooked my camp, and as the sun began to set, I spread my elytra wings and flew off.